I turned my dumb water system into a smart one for under $100. With Levit sensors, pump monitoring, and some code, I now have a complete digital twin that tracks water levels across multiple tanks, monitor pumps performance, shows water transfers in real time, and sends me alert. No more guessing games, and I can see exactly how water moves through my entire system. Let me show you the setup that changed everything. Welcome back everyone and thank you for joining me on another video. This topic has been covered before by some awesome YouTubers who cover home assistant and smart home automations, like Simon Says Home Assistant and Lars Klind and WeSmart. This video is intended to be a refresh for 2025, as well as adding a twist of digital twin into the mix. I hope you like it. And I hope you also check out the other folks channels and make sure to subscribe to my channel and like the video. And let me know if you would like to see anything different or if you would have done anything differently as well. Thanks. Let's get to it. Step one. Let's start by talking about what you need to purchase to get this project rolling. This is all the items that I got. And let's start with the Shelly Plus Uni, which is our sensor in this case, widely available from most shopping websites and from the Shelly official website as well. Pretty small, pretty efficient, and really, really reliable product. I'm so happy with it. And then we need a couple of wiring terminals, one way, two way, four way. And we, uh, also get an enclosure box to house our uh, uni this is really up to you uh, how it looks like i got this one as well and then you can get this dc power connector uh, with the size mentioned here to connect it to your uh, adapter power supply so this one i got is 24 volts at uh, 2 amps but 1 amp is more than enough so you can go out with 1 amp as well and uh, this is, uh, as I mentioned again, this is AC to DC, uh, 24 volts. And uh, this is the uh, UK plug. In my case, you can change it with any plug. And this is the connector, as you can see, to give us the wiring inputs, uh, negative and positive. And then we will connect it to our... Uh, Okay, so, so here's the uh, DIN rail power supply. This is, in my case, I have uh, a cabinet, so I'm going to mount this on top. Same thing, this is AC input and uh, DC 24 volts output. Uh, pretty neat, pretty good uh, product as well. Instead of the adapter, this is mutually exclusive with the adapter. And finally, of course, the core part of the project is the liquid level sensor. In my case, the tank is uh, less than two meter range. So the power supply voltage uh, range is between 12 to 36. It says typical 24. So I went for the 24 adapter, uh, the default, and I chose the output signal zero to 10 volt. Let's take a closer look. It is shipped correctly, so the range is zero to two meters. Uh, the cable itself is five meters. Uh, do not be confused uh, between the range of the sensor and the meter length. So I measured the cable, it is indeed five meters. So again, uh, you can go with any power supply voltage in this range uh, but again i said why not let's go with the typical 24 volt range uh, this is the imprint on the sensor it says the same thing we just talked about it's not very clear uh, in the video so uh, yeah you can just follow the uh, labels i i put on the video and then the last important part, make sure you receive a three wire sensor. The blue one is your negative, red one is your positive, and the white one is the sensor reading itself. 
All right, step two, wiring the whole thing together. So this is a very important step. Let's pay attention and do it together. This is the Shelly plus Uni wiring diagram. Don't worry too much about this. We'll start by plugging in our power supply positive into the three-way wire connector. We'll take the Shelly position one red cable, as you can see, on the Shelly. And then we will connect it to our three-way connector, as shown. Then we will take the sensor red line as well and connect that to the same connector. So we have three red cables connected into the three-way connector. Moving on for the negative, we'll take the negative pole from the adapter connected to this five-way connector. Then we'll take position two from the Shelly, the black VAC2 cable connected there. And then we'll take the ground position seven green cable and connect it to the connector as well. And lastly, we will take the sensor blue cable into the same connector as you can see. Finally, the easiest one, position three analog in white cable into sensor white cable into the two-way connector. Great, so we're ready for our first test. Let's power this up and then let's look at the Shelly sensor. We can see that the LED is red, which means it's powered on and looking good. Fantastic, so step three, now that the Shelly is powered on, Let's go ahead and configure it. And the easiest approach for this is to get your mobile phone, search for it via Bluetooth, connect it to your Wi-Fi, and then just add it to Wi-Fi. And next, you might wanna check the firmwares. You might want to also update it more than once and get it up to the latest firmware. Now, Let's head to the IP that is connected for the Shelly on your Wi-Fi. Let's go to peripherals and add the voltmeter peripheral. Uh, this will not come out of the box, so you have to add it, reboot, and then uh, reconnect back to the Shelly. This is what we're going to use for our uh, uh, water level meter uh, sensor input. So without this step, you will not see the volt uh, range. Uh, you can just change the name as well if you wish. Now let's go back to Home Assistant and go to Devices. It is auto discovered by the Shelly native integration Home Assistant. So very straightforward, very easy. Just add it to your areas and uh, you should be good. Now let's finish. Let's go to the uh, actual sensor. You'll see the voltmeter is uh, also enabled and it actually has a very tiny reading for the sensor uh, without being in any liquid. So far, so good. So let's head to back to the lab and do our first test. Here I got a storage box filled it with some water and I'm just immersing the sensor and checking the voltage reading uh, on Home Assistant, as you can see, it's giving me 0 0.49 as a stable reading for 11 liters of water. Now, another test for a 20 centimeter depth of water gave me almost double that number, which makes me believe that it is a linear relationship between the voltage sensor and the height. Great. So now that we're happy with the lab, let's get to the actual assembly preparation for the real field deployment. First, I'm gonna drill a knockout in this plastic enclosure that I got for the Shelly. I uh, want to do it to house it. I'm not comfortable leaving it uh, un un unhoused. And then let's uh, start by inserting the Shelly and passing the cables through the tiny knockout we have done.
result nice and tidy enclosure for the Shelly housed inside an electrical junction box and now I wanted to test the AC to DC power supply in my case as I showed you I have this uh, control panel so I wanted to double check the rating of this power supply so I'm gonna do a quick voltmeter test and indeed it is already calibrated to 24 uh, you can also calibrate this from the tiny switch uh, lever as shown and uh, increase or decrease the output voltage so I'm gonna make sure it is uh, calibrated to 24 volts and it is exactly calibrated to 24 volts so looking good and ready to be deployed in the field step six installation of everything in the field first i want to walk you through the current environment i have the underground tank and then i have a pump control and i have an isolation switch please do not attempt to do anything in electricity unless you are qualified to do so and this is the before image you can see i have a good empty space to mount my power supply and my enclosure and on the right hand side you see i have mounted the power supply and enclosure i also passed the power cable from the top small runway and the sensor cable unfortunately was short so i could not run it through the uh, runway so the underground tank was unfortunately dirty uh, but the good news is that i found a conduit that i can't pass my sensor cable through so i went ahead and got a company to clean the tank and i really wanted to take a moment to shout out to uh, dotless because they are an honest company and they did a good job at an affordable price and you can see me watching them from home assistant camera now that the tank is cleaned up i have passed the sensor as you can see and i am turning on the water from the smart meter and you can see the water rate uh, utility flow is uh, 1.6 now after the some time i measured again and i found that it is reading 2.7 volts at the depth of 60 centimeters now on to the bonus step how to do calculations between volts and meters and volume and, and all of that so here i want to explain to you uh, what i've done i have uh, created uh, first of all let's go to the voltmeter uh, readings and you can see it is reading 6.38 let's go back to the time where the tank was filling or cleaning uh, you can see a stable reading in the beginning and then uh, there is some sort of uh, a gap uh, this gap is when we emptied the tank and powered off the Shelly sensor and then you can see on the start time when the Shelly was back online, we started filling. You can see the volt readings is increasing slowly, which indicates the tank filling. And the filling rate, if you remember, was 1.6 cubic meters. So uh, if we do some maths, we can see that uh, for 4.5 hours, it took uh, us, it filled uh, 7.2 uh, cubic meters. And if we compare that to the actual utility billing from our smart meter, uh, as you can see from my energy dashboard, you see that the numbers do match, which means our calculation is correct. And if you haven't checked my previous video on getting utility readings, please find it in the description. Now remember that we have only so far the voltage reading of the sensor and we do not know the depth of water or how to calculate it automatically or how to calculate the volume so we're gonna use this digital twin that i've created and we're gonna calculate or use the calculation at maximum capacity of the tank and we're gonna apply it to this equation very simply to uh, get the height 
at the max reading when the sensor was 6.3 and then we're going to get the ratio of voltage to meter or height or depth of that tank to get the value of 3.75 which we're going to be using later to get the height or the depth of water and as well as the volume now this reading might not be very accurate so that's why i have taken a few measures and gotten a global average of all of them and then i created this helper uh, in, in in home assistant and i applied this variable 4.55 sorry this constant 4.55 to get the height out of the uh, voltage as well as the volume and uh, we can also go back to the same uh, time when we were filling and you can see this is now volume in cubic meters and the template option or the uh, equation is as follows we have the width is fixed uh, length is fixed and then we have the voltage divided by the uh, voltage to meter ratio 4.55 which gives us the cubic meter volume uh, device class water and these helpers can be very useful for your dashboards and for your digital twin all right we have reached uh, the end of this video thank you for watching uh, please make sure to subscribe if you want to follow the next episode in this series thank you